eOrganic proudly presents its Organic Dairy video series. The information in the series is brought to you by University of Vermont Extension and eOrganic, with funding from the USDA Organic Agriculture Research and Extension Initiative. eOrganic is eExtension's organic agriculture community of practice, providing certified organic agriculture information to farmers, educators, certifiers, and other agricultural professionals throughout the United States. For more information, visit us at extension.org slash organic underscore production. Hello, my name is Guy Jadarski and I'm a veterinarian with Organic Valley. I've been uh, just I'm starting my 24th year of practice and I've been working with organic farmers for probably six or seven years. Um, today we're looking at Kevin Yonke's calves and Kevin is a seasonal producer uh, and so he has a lot of cows that calve in a short period of time. So he, the nice thing about this is he gets a group of calves that are close in age and that makes it, uh, for raising a group of calves, it makes it easier. Some of the things that are, uh, Kevin is doing very well is feeding enough whole milk. That's one thing that we really need to do is feed enough whole milk to our calves. So he's giving a gallon of milk morning and night and that's what we suggest for for people with Holstein sized cattle, at least give a gallon or four quarts in both morning and night. With Jersey sized cattle, three quarts. And these are crossbred with a lot of Jersey breeding in them, and they're about two months old at this point. And what you'll notice is that their body condition is excellent, and what they are uh, very well grown. Both the frame is grown, and also their internal organs, they're, they're, they're filling out quite nicely. And so <clears throat> this milk is, is really an important part of the issue. The other thing is, it's the grazing season, the grass is out there, and, and these calves are on paddocks outside. And so grazing is very important. And so we like to see forage into these calves right from day one. He rotates his paddocks, and so this is really important for parasite control. We need to move the calves to new areas because uh, internal parasites, the worms in particular with grazing, are, are a big problem with organic cattle. The milk really helps keep worms down, so uh, that's, that's, a, that's important. And so we really want to kind of delay the weaning and maybe take the taper off the milk rather than just stopping abruptly. So we want this calf to adapt to the forage diet before we take that milk away. And here you can see some of the calves walking out and you can notice how straight and tall they are. The, the legs are straight, the backs are straight. And so a lot of times we look at those things as being genetic traits, which they are to some degree but also the nutrition really brings on the expression of those good genetics and, and that, that confirmation, that form is really influenced by the nutrition. And so there's nothing that really kind of replaces that, that whole milk that, that's so important. And the other thing you notice is these calves are chewing their cud. And so these calves are two months old, they're chewing their cud, and Kevin has told me that they've been chewing their cud for over a month now. And this is one issue that's kind of a uh, controversial issue because some uh, uh, nutritionists will say that a calf will not develop a rumen function without grain and these calves get very little grain. They get a little bit of grain to carry kelp and they only eat a few ounces per day. They mostly eat forage and milk and they have excellent rumen development which is just what we see with calves that are on nurse cows or beef calves. Rumen development can occur without grain. So the amount of saliva that they actually swallow probably helps the digestion and also makes them feel satisfied so that they don't want to suck. If a calf uh, drinks out of a pail and just wolfs that milk down in a hurry, mm -hmm. there's a lot of volume there, and yet it's not going to digest properly because it doesn't have the saliva. It's not natural for the calf to have a big bolus of milk like that. And, and you think about a cow, calf nursing on a cow, it's going to take small meals several times a day. And we go down to two times a day feeding just for managing our time, but we need to make that calf drink that milk over a period of time. We've got uh, a lot of Jersey genetics in our cattle, which means uh, just about every calf born has some horns. And you know we like to dehorn the cows or you know the calves because you know they grow up with horns on the cows and it's, it's just not safe around us and, and the other cattle. Um, in the past, we've you know we've always used an electric dehorner. It seemed like you know to be the most humane method. It also was was nice because there was no blood. That you know the time of the year that we needed to dehorn our calves was was just getting into the fly season. So the the dehorner was was a pretty clean method. Now these calves have been were dehorned a week ago. Uh, about two weeks ago, oh, we dehorned weeks. these with the uh, with the electric dehorner. But the difference this year is that we used lidocaine, which is a nerve block. Um, we gave them the shot of lidocaine, five cc's on each side, 
uh, waited about five to ten minutes and, and dehorned the calves and it was just amazing that most of the calves when when they were going through the dehorning process were not were not tensed up at all we we've got a little cattle chute that we use for calves uh, they weren't pulled back in the chute uh, I was telling uh, Dr. Guy last night that when we dehorn the calves there's actually a couple calves that while I was dehorning the calf it was it was licking my leg and, and looking around like like nothing was going on so it was it's definitely a humane way to go I would recommend it here they're, they're they're developing a herd social structure they're you know all being together like this they're used to being together uh, they're very calm uh, they're very easy to approach because of the, the you know people coming and feeding them and also moving them between the paddocks but really would like to point out uh, these fences with the uh, with the tape um, and how they how they've got different paddocks here and so this this and this is uh, this year uh, there haven't been calves on this ground for for a while so this is this is fresh ground and so this is a, a concept that people need to keep in mind with calves is get them on fresh ground and then keep them moving around and offer them some good feed you can see there's some very high quality grass here and they're going to eat it and they're going to make use of it and so that's going to make the weanings of these calves so much easier if they get that rumen function going and they're able to digest this grass and they have good quality grass then weaning is not going to be such a problem. This is the uh, the barrel that we're using this year to feed our calves. I guess it would be described as a uh, as a mob feeder um, gravity type system, where the uh, the milk is above the nipples. Uh, there are other systems where the uh, um, the milk is drawn up a hose from the bottom of the barrel. I've tried both systems and, and both seem to work equally well. I, we just had trouble this year. Um, when the calves are on the, uh, the system with the hoses, they have to keep continuously sucking to keep that milk up the hose and if they stop, you know, the milk falls down and they have to start over and, and it just seemed like some of the calves weren't doing real good on that system and they'd get frustrated and, and it'd end up to be kind of like a ring around the rosy type deal on the feeder. Um, so, so this is a gravity type system. The, the nipples are, are Milk Bar brand nipples. And uh, the nipple is very important to, uh, to feeding a calf, especially in a system where you're, where you're putting a, you know, a gallon of milk into that calf per feeding. Um, you know, a lot of farmers always believe that too much milk was going to make a calf sick. But you know, my experience you know, 20 years ago with, with beef cows and calves is that you, know, you could see a beef cow um, you know, have way more milk than a calf is going to drink and those beef calves never ever get sick and, and the reason is that when that calf is drinking the milk from a cow they always get the right ratio of saliva. So what these nipples do is, is make that calf work for the milk. You know, the milk doesn't come out very easy. They've got to suck pretty hard. Um, it takes them about 10 minutes to drink. So during that 10 minutes, you know, they're, they're creating a lot of saliva with that sucking action and that saliva actually begins the digestion process as that milk is hitting the stomach. So the you know the saliva is very very important to a good healthy calf. Components in the saliva that, that actually pre-starts the digestion process to make that milk um, clot up so that the calf and the abomasum can digest that milk without getting sick. Now what's the bell about? Um, well, <laughs> I saw the dinner bell on this, so I've I've got a, a pump in the utility room that I pour the milk into. There's a, there's a water line, that, that or a milk line, I guess you could say, that, that pumps the milk over here so I don't have to carry it. Um, because, you know, trying to carry five-gallon buckets of milk in, in a group of pen with, with 15 or 20 hungry calves um, doesn't work very well. You get trampled. <laughs> so so it, the milk is pumped into this pipe right here, um, hits the little flywheel, and uh, makes the bell ring. And I did that because with our with our grazing system that we have for the calves, there's times where they're you know three four hundred yards away from the building, and when I start pumping the milk, they they don't know it. So I rigged up a little bell system. When the milk comes in, it it rings the bell, and it's the dinner bell. So the calves hear the bell and they come running. My wife and kids probably like our system of mob feeding over the the nurse cows just for the reason that that everybody becomes a pet. And. Uh, and that's a nice way to, to be on a farm is to have your cows uh, come up to you and, and want to be around you.